Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. The European Commission wants to introduce a new set of liability rules specifically targeted at AI to increase protection for consumers, enhance legal certainty and trust in AI and foster innovation across the EU. But what are the challenges ahead? Stay with us. Nowadays, AI systems help us diagnose patients, monitor crops, plan the smartest bus routes or hire new recruits. But with increased responsibilities come increased risks. And current national liability rules are clearly ill-equipped to handle claims for damage caused by AI products and services. Victims usually need to prove a wrongful action or omission by a person who caused the damage. Under the current liability rules, that means they have to identify whom to sue and explain in detail the fault, the damage and the causal link between the two. But as you can imagine, this is not always easy, particularly when AI is involved. Such systems are often complex, opaque and autonomous, which makes it very difficult, if not impossible, for the victim to provide proof and identify the liable person for a damage caused by AI products and services. Legal uncertainty creates a compensation gap which undermines public trust in AI, harms businesses and hampers innovation. So, what is the EU going to do about it? Well, at the end of September 2022, and as part of a wider revamping of its liability rules, the European Commission introduced for the first time rules specific to damages caused by AI systems. In line with the objectives of the AI White Paper and the 2021 AI Act, the new rules will ensure that victims of harm caused by AI technology can get compensation in the same way as if they were harmed under any other circumstances. They will cover national liability claims based on the fault or omission of any person, from providers to developers and users, for the compensation of any type of damage covered by national law and for any type of victim, be them individual persons, companies or organisations. Let's hear the European Commissioner for the Internal Market, Thierry Breton. The message is clear. We want the same level of protection for victims of damage caused by AI as for victims of other technologies. Our proposal will ensure that justified claims are not hindered by specific difficulties of proof linked to AI. To achieve this, two main safeguards are introduced. First, the so-called presumption of causality, which will relieve victims from having to explain in detail how the damage was caused. And second, the access to evidence from companies or suppliers when dealing with high-risk AI. Tambiyama Madiega from the European Parliamentary Research Service explains to us how the presumption of causality would work for high-risk AI systems. Basically, if a provider of a high-risk AI system is not compliant with the requirements like data trading, transparency and accuracy that are imposed by the AI Act to provide those systems in the EU, uh, national courts uh, would presume that this non-compliance has likely caused the damage. The defendant may, however, rebut such presumption of causality, for example, by showing that its fault could not have caused the damage. To help victims identify the person responsible for the damage and find out what went wrong, national courts will have the power to order disclosure of evidence about high-risk AI systems that are suspected of having caused the damage. For instance, when this is caused because an operator of drones delivering packages does not respect the instructions of use, or because a provider does not follow requirements when using AI-enabled recruitment services. Together with the revised product liability directive, the European Commission believes the new rules will promote trust in AI by ensuring that victims are effectively compensated if damage occurs, despite the preventive requirements of the AI Act and other safety rules. So how have they been received by stakeholders? Stay with us. Stakeholders and academics are questioning, among other things, the adequacy and effectiveness of the proposed liability regime, as well as its coherence with the Artificial Intelligence Act currently under negotiation and its potentially negative impact on innovation. 
Consumer associations and civil society groups welcome the proposed new rules, but warn they contain blind spots. The Future of Life Institute, an independent non-profit organization, recommends a strict liability regime for high-risk and general-purpose AI systems and proposes that all other AI systems fall under a fault-based liability regime where the presumption of fault lies on the operator. It also calls upon EU lawmakers to harmonize the immaterial damages and indirect harms for which compensation is allowed. Mark Brakel is policy director at Future of Life Institute. Many AI systems lead to immaterial damages. For example, a credit scoring system um, could deny someone a loan based on the color of their skin. FLI feels that anyone within the EU should be able to claim immaterial damages and that the extent to which you are able to lay that claim should not depend on the member state that you are based in. On the opposite end of the debate, part of the tech industry worries that the proposed rules could have a chilling effect on innovation. To prevent this, the Information Technology Industry Council, a global advocate for technology, called on legislators to ensure that the AI Act and the AI Liability Directive go in the same direction, to limit disclosure orders and to introduce stricter conditions for triggering the causation presumption. Here's ITI policy manager Marco Leto Baroni. The combined application of the AI Act, the AI Liability Directive and the new Product Liability Directive will have an impact on the European AI ecosystem. There is a risk of overregulation, and as the global voice of the tech sector, ITI warns against excessive liability exposure for AI developers in the AI Liability Directive. This can be achieved by further limiting the applicability of the disclosure orders in Article 3 and the presumption of causation in Article 4 to well-justified cases only. In the European Parliament, the file is being followed by the Legal Affairs Committee, who is now discussing the Commission's proposal. We've spoken to the rapporteur, Axel Voss. I'm expecting that we are doing here three things. At first, a full harmonised approach means a regulation. Secondly, that there are no overlaps um, towards the Product Liability Directive and the AI Act itself. And thirdly, also, we need a strict liability regime for high-risk AI systems. For more information, check out Tambiama Madiega's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.